So today I have this RCA TV. It's a model LED 46C45 RQ. And the problem is, um, I've got the remote here and I hit it uh, for the remote sensor down here in the corner and the set does absolutely nothing. I cannot get it to turn on and uh, I've checked the remote control. You can see the uh, infrared emitters are working perfectly fine and I can't get the set to turn on but then I stumbled across a very interesting fact. The thing I noticed is that the EEPROM right here if you freeze the EEPROM, then the set will operate normally. So, what I'm going to do is pull the EEPROM off of the board, and I'm going to freeze it and try to read the data out of it and write the data into a new EEPROM. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to both sides of the EEPROM and alternately go back and forth and try to get all the pins molten at the same time. And hopefully that I'm not in the way of anything here and you can see what I'm doing. And it's a very, uh, it's kind of tough to do this with the camera in the way. So I'm gonna put my needle nose pliers in between here, heat up one side Heat up the front side and just lift the EEPROM right off the board. Clean the pads and then I'm ready to go. Okay, so what I've got here is a EEPROM reader writer. And it's just something I picked up on eBay. It was pretty cheap. I think it was about $25 or $30. And the way it operates is it has a clip here and it allows you to clip it to the 8-pin uh, flat pack SOIC-8 IC chip. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have it labeled here, pins one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. And this is an old connector I used that just happened to be spaced correctly. And so all I have to do is attach this to the EEPROM. And I wanna make sure that it's up in there all the way across, and it is. So it's just going to kind of hang there for a moment. Okay, so here's the program. It's called FlyPro. And um, it's got a, a little feature here where you go to Auto Detect Type. And I've frozen the chip already. And you hit Start Detect. And it gives you the closest that it thinks it is. This is a BV. So I'm going to go to Read. And it's going to read the data out of the EEPROM right now. And it's going to save it. And so what I can do now is go into save. And then I can tell it a file name I want to save it in. And it'll save it in my document. So I'm just going to name it RCA. And I'm going to click save. Save file successful. Okay, now I've got my new EEPROM in here. And so what I'm gonna do is go to blank check, and it's just gonna to check to make sure there's no data written to this EEPROM whatsoever. So next I'm gonna to go to program, and it's going to write the data back onto the EEPROM. And now I'm gonna to go to verify, and it's gonna verify the data that it just wrote against the program that I had already saved. And let's see, there were some other options. There we go, there is the actual EEPROM data. So if you had an error and you knew what the error was, you could actually go in here and you could change the data in the EEPROM. You could change one byte in the EEPROM if necessary. Okay, I have the data written to the EEPROM. Try to get a little bit of light over here so I can see what I'm doing as I solder this back in. So just make sure you have your pin lined up with pin number one. And I can just finesse it back into place if it'll let me. There we go.
Okay, there's one side. I'm sure I'm going to get in the way on this one. All right, there we go. Okay, here's our set back together. Hit the power button on the remote. Last time, all it did was that little red light would go off and the set would not actually ever turn on. And I believe it was because the EEPROM data was corrupt. The set does appear to come on. It seems to work okay. Let's change some channels around here and make sure that we get some other channels. Everything's working. I don't have any speakers connected right now. So there's no way I can check the audio, but I have turned the set on and off successfully several times. So hopefully this uh, helps. Just a, a quick little tip about finding the EEPROM programmer is I did just a slight bit of research, not very much, but I did look at the EEPROM part number and I did some Googling of it and uh, came up with a reader that would support most of the TV EEPROMs as well as some other old ones. It's, it's uh, like I said, fairly inexpensive. It's a, it's a convenient little thing. I save the file. That way, if I ever have one of these sets again with an actual totally corrupt EEPROM, I can write the data back into it. Uh, some of the Vizios, I call them Vizi Uh-Ohs because I see so many of them. Uh-Oh, here comes another Vizio. Anyhow, uh, a lot of the Vizios I've seen, uh, it's been about three or four years ago now, but it was the... Uh, the E Economy Series, uh, E, I think it was a 321 VL, had a lot of EEPROM problems, and uh, one of my YouTube followers uh, turned me on to this little tip, and I do appreciate him very much for cluing me in on this little secret that you can read the data out of the EEPROM and reprogram it into a new one. And so that's how this got started. I've probably done about 15 or 20 of the Vizios with this problem, and uh, only a couple of these. This is the first one I actually had time to video for you. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video of replacing the uh, EEPROM data contents into another EEPROM. With your help we can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. I try to answer your questions as much as I possibly can but I can't answer every one. Everybody have a great day. Remember you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.